Operational amplifiers, op-amps, are linear devices that have all the characteristics required for nearly ideal DC amplification and are therefore widely used in signal conditioning or filtering or performing mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, integration, and differentiation. The purpose of this video is to provide 10 basic circuits for newcomers to electronic designs and to refresh the minds of engineers, as well as resistors and capacitors that are passive components. Operational amplifiers are one of the basic building blocks of analog electronic circuits. An operational amplifier, op-amp, is an integrated circuit, IC, that amplifies the difference in voltage between two inputs. It is so named because it was developed for perform arithmetic operations. The principle of the amplifier is to produce an output signal that is a copy of the input signal with a higher magnitude. Note that amplifiers amplify a weak signal without changing the input signal or changing the information. Negative feedback is used in amplifiers. Introduction of 10 Main Operational Amplifier Circuits One Voltage Follower The most basic circuit is the voltage buffer, as it does not require any external components. As the voltage output is equal to the voltage input. Students might become puzzled and wonder whether this kind of circuit has any practical application. This circuit allows for a very high impedance input and a low impedance output. This is useful for connecting logic levels between two components or when the power supply is based on a voltage divider. This circuit is based on a voltage divider and the circuit cannot work. In fact, the load impedance can have variations, so the voltage V out can change dramatically, especially if the load impedance has a value equal to R2. To solve this problem, an amplifier is placed between the load and the voltage divider, as shown in the figure. Therefore, V out depends on R1 and R2 and not on the load value. The primary goal of an operational amplifier, as its name states, is to amplify a signal. For instance, the output of a sensor must be amplified in order to have the ADC measure this signal. 2. Inverting the op-amp An inverting amplifier is a type of amplifier whose output waveform is in the opposite phase of the input waveform. The input waveform will be the magnitude of the amplifier with the AV factor, amplifier voltage gain, and its phase will be reversed. In this configuration, the output is fed back to the negative input through a resistor, R2. The input signal is applied to this inverting pin through a resistor, R1. Note that the positive pin is connected to ground. This is evident in the special case where R1 and R2 are equal. This configuration allows for the production of a signal that is complementary to the input as the output is exactly the opposite of the input signal. Due to the negative sign, the output and input signals are out of phase. If both signals must be in phase, a non-inverting amplifier is used. Non-inverting op-amp 3. Non-inverting op-amp A non-inverting operational amplifier, op-amp, is a type of op-amp in which the output voltage is in phase with the input voltage. A non-inverting op-amp is used in applications that require signal amplification without providing phase inversion. This configuration is very similar to the inverting operation amplifier. For the non-inverting one, the input voltage is directly to the applied to the non-inverting pin and the end of feedback loop is connected to ground. These configurations allow amplification of one signal. It's possible to amplify several signals by using summing amplifiers. Non-inverting summing amplifier For non-inverting summing amplifier To add two voltages, 
only two resistors can be added on the positive pin to the non-inverting operational amplifier circuit. It is worth noting that adding multiple voltages is not a very flexible solution. In fact, it is better if a third voltage is added with the same resistances, and in this figure you can see the corresponding formula. The big disadvantage of the non-inverting summing amplifier is that if you cut off one of the inputs, the gain of the circuit is doubled for the remaining connected channel. This is not the case with the inverting summing amplifier as it creates a virtual ground summing point. Inverting Summing Amplifier The non-inverting summing amplifier is an op-amp circuit configuration which provides a summed output of the input signals with the same polarity or phase. These amplifiers use the direct coupling method which signifies that the source signals are directed connected to the op-amp. By adding resistors in parallel on the inverting input pin of the inverting operation amplifier circuit, all the voltages are summed. Unlike the non-inverting summing amplifier, any number of voltages can be added without changing resistor values. Differential Amplifier Six, differential amplifier. A differential amplifier is a type of electronic amplifier that amplifies the difference between two input voltages, but suppresses any voltage common to the two inputs. It is an analog circuit with two inputs and an one output. The inverting op-amp, C circuit number two, amplified the voltage applied to the inverting pin and the output voltage was out of phase. The non-inverting pin is connected to ground with this configuration. If the inverting operational amplifier circuit is modified by applying a voltage through a voltage divider to the non-inverting one, we end up with a differential amplifier, as in this circuit. An amplifier is not only useful because it allows you to add, subtract, or compare voltages. Many circuits allow you to change the signal. Let's see the most basic of them. Circuit 7 to 10 are of this circuit model. Integrator. 7. Integrator. For example, just by switching the GPIO of a microcontroller, a square wave is generated. If a circuit requires a triangular waveform, a good way to do it is to simply integrate the square wave signal. With an operational amplifier, a capacitor in the inverting feedback path, and a resistor at the inverting base of the input as shown, the input signal is integrated. Be aware that a resistor is often connected in parallel to the capacitor for saturation issues. Indeed, if the input signal is a very low frequency sine wave, the capacitor acts like an open circuit and blocks feedback voltage. The amplifier is then like a normal open loop amplifier that has very high open loop gain, and the amplifier is saturated. Thanks to a resistor in parallel of the capacitor, the circuit behaves like an inverting amplifier with a low frequency, and saturation is avoided. Op-amp differentiator 8. Op-amp differentiator Both differential amplifier and differentiator react to a voltage difference. But in the differential amplifier, the difference is between two voltages applied to the amp inputs at the same time while in the differentiator, the difference is between two voltage values at adjacent moments of time. The differentiator works similarly to the integrator by swapping the capacitor and the resistor. The differential op-amp configuration produces an output voltage that is proportional to the rate of change of the input voltage by measuring the current through a capacitor. Converter current to voltage 
9. Converter current to voltage. The underlying principle of a current to voltage converter involves feedback from a high gain amplifier, often an operational amplifier, op amp. The feedback is designed such that it maintains a virtually short circuit for the input current and thereby maintains the input terminal at a nearly constant voltage. A photodetector converts light into current. To convert the current into voltage, a simple circuit with an operational amplifier, a feedback loop through a resistor on the non-inverting, and the diode connected between the two input pins allows you to get an output voltage proportional to current generated by the photodiode, which is evident by the light characteristics. Negative resistance. 10. Negative resistance. This circuit applies Ohm's law with the basic formula, voltage equals resistance times current. Resistance is in Ohms and is always positive. But thanks to operational amplifiers, a negative resistor can be designed. Negative feedback causes its gain to decrease substantially. On the other hand, negative feedback increases the frequency bandwidth in which the gain curve remains flat and decreases the output impedance. A feedback on the inverting pin forces the output voltage to be the double of the input voltage. As the output voltage is always higher than the input voltage, the positive feedback through the R1 resistor on the non-inverting pin simulates a negative resistance. Finally, a circuit with operational amplifier does not necessarily modify the input signal, but records it like the peak detector amplifier. Also, peak detector operation amplifier. Op-amp-based peak detector circuit is the modification of basic peak detector circuit used to remove the voltage drop across the diode. Whenever the applied input voltage signal is greater than the threshold voltage of the diode, the diode will get forward biased and acts as a closed switch. The capacitor is used as a memory. When the input voltage on the non-inverting input is higher than the voltage on the inverting input that is also the voltage across the capacitor, the amplifier enters in saturation and the diode is forward and charges the capacitor. Assuming the capacitor does not have a quick self-discharge, when the input voltage VE is lower than voltage across the capacitor, the diode is blocked. Hence, the peak voltage is recorded thanks to the capacitor. Many more circuits are available with operational amplifiers, but understanding these fundamental 10 circuits allows you to easily study more complex circuits.